Hey friends, and welcome back to another Kitchen Table Talk with me. I am Wendy with Inspire Ministries, and I have something of an encouragement and a challenge for you today. Something that I was reading in my quiet time just this week, and it was such a powerful thought that I wrote it down in my journal. Now, um, I don't always have powerful thoughts like this, but when I do, I feel like I cannot contain it and I cannot keep it to myself. And I actually wrote the date here of 92921 so that I would not forget this. And to me, this was a powerful thought. Now, again, I don't know that I've ever looked at it like this before, but it is something that God illuminated in scripture for me this week. And I knew that I had to share it with you. Now, this comes out of the book of John. I was in chapter 17, and it happens to be Jesus's final prayer. Now, now, Jesus is praying for his disciples and he is praying before he is going to the cross and he says some amazingly powerful words in this chapter. And one of the things that I want to read to you that stood out to me almost more than anything else that he said in this chapter is found in verse 17. And I want to read to you a couple verses before that, just so that we can get an idea of what he was saying as he prayed this. Now, I want to go back to um, verse 13, and I'm going to read through verse 17. This is, again, was John chapter 17. And it says in verse 13, Now I'm coming to you. I told them many things while I was with them, talking about the disciples, in this world, so they would be filled with my joy. I told them these things so they would be filled with my joy. He says in verse 14, I have given them your word and the world hates them because they do not belong to this world, just as I do not belong to this world. Verse 15, I'm not asking you to take them out of this world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. Now, before we go any further, that is huge. He says, I am not asking you to take them out. Listen, I have resourced them. I have equipped them to be able to handle the evil that is in the world. So I'm not asking you to take them out, but I'm asking you to keep them safe from the evil one. Verse 16, it says, they do not belong to this world any more than I do. And then finally, in verse 17, he says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Now, the King James Version uses this word sanctify, and it says sanctify them. In other words, make them holy. Now, I wrote down in my notes that Jesus bought us with a price, right? We know this. As believers in Christ, we know that we have been bought with a price. He counted us as worthy as of value and valued enough to die for us. Now, my commentary said something interesting that I want to read. It says this, we're, meaning you and I as believers, we are not the world's. If we were, we may be ambitious. We wouldn't be Christian. We would be ambitious, right? If we belonged to the world. He says, we're not Satan's because if we were, we would be covetous. So the Christian and covetedness can't even coincide, in other words. The commentary goes on to say, we're not our own, because if we were, we'd be selfish. And then we, they says, finally, at the end, we were bought with a price, and we are his, and he counts us as worthy. So this is Jesus's final prayer, and he is praying for those that he is leaving behind to have strength in the faith. And he thought it to, enough, he thought of it enough to say, they do not belong to the world any more than I do. And I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. I'm asking you to keep them safe. I'm asking you to keep them safe from the one who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Listen, I've equipped them while I'm here. I've taught them everything I know. I've given them my joy. I've given them my love. I've given them every resource available to me and my strength. And I'm not asking you to take them out of this world, but I'm asking you to um, help them as they face the enemy. And so I love this so much. And I want to leave you with a couple thoughts today. Jesus pleads on our behalf. 
He pleads and he intercedes and he begs God to sanctify us or to make us holy. I love this. The word holy really means to be separate. So he's already said, like, we do not belong to the world. They don't belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. But I'm getting to go away and be with you, Father. They have to remain. They have to continue to stay here and to fight the good faith. And he pleads for God. He begs for God to make us holy, to separate us from the rest of the world. And I had this thought. I said, if Jesus presents us to the Father and he asks that he make us holy, are we conducting ourselves worthy of that of the sacrifice and of the solicitation? Just think about that for a minute. If Jesus presents us to God, he had the wherewithal to present us to the Lord. to to pray for us, to present us to the Father and asks that the Father in his loving care and mercy and kindness sanctify us or make us holy. Listen, friends, that ought to change our minds about how we are currently living. It ought to make us and cause us to have a different mode of living. We ought to be focused on how are we conducting ourselves? How are we living worthy of that sacrifice and that solicitation? Because he's like, listen, I count them as worthy. I love them. They are my sheep. They know my name. And I am presenting them to you in prayer that you would make them holy, that you would sanctify them, that you would uh, keep them from any harm from the evil one. You know, I have a sticky note on my laptop and that sticky note says, why has God been so good to me? I know it's a weird question to have on my uh, on a sticky note on my laptop, but what that does for me every single day is that holds me accountable for how I'm living. Why has the Lord been so good to me? And then really Just after that, I have this little note really in small print that says, how can I live in response to that? How am I living in response to his sacrifice and his solicitation, his honoring of me, his respect of me, his love for me so much that he would take me to the feet of the Father and say, you know what, I'm leaving, but they don't have enough strength on their own to do this. So will you help them? Will you help them? I love this so much, friends, and I hope that you did too. John 17, 17, make them holy, sanctify them. Listen, if Jesus loved us enough and considered us worthy enough to present us to the Father, how are we living in response to that? How are we living with that sacrifice, knowing that Jesus made this huge sacrifice for us and that he solicits us to the Father and he says, I count them as worthy and they are my sheep. And if I love them so much and I have I've reared them so much and I have taken care of them so much and I have taught them so much. I am now leaving them to your care. If he thought enough about us to do that, listen, we have an obligation and a responsibility to live according to that call, to live according to that sacrifice and that solicitation. Why has the Lord been so good to me? It is a question that we can ask every single day of our life. And then we can say, and how is our response in that? How are we living in response to God being so good to me? Friends, I hope that this has encouraged you today. I sure know that it did me when I read it. I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus today. Happy Friday. Bye, friends.